when I became dean, I gave the first convocation address as dean. And instead of speaking more directly about my academic work, I, I spoke more directly about my background, uh, especially growing up in Belfast, um, where I was a student in the early 70s, which were the worst years of the Troubles there. And so I've had a lifelong interest in, and passion for, I think, uh, figuring out how religion relates to political culture or to human flourishing or to violence and conflict. So I think um, the response to that address was so much um, greater than I expected. And I decided with some support to launch this Religions in the Practice of Peace initiative. And I think what the real reason for it was um, that we all could see an asymmetry in the literature around religion and violence that 90% um, uh, of the literature is about religion and conflict, but really um, uh, uh, religion's contribution to peace or peace building is not so well written about. It's, it's getting better, but there's still a long way to go. So part of it was to uh, correct that asymmetry, and part of it was to dig deep into religious traditions to see what resources they had for peace building, these religious traditions have been around for a very long time. And although there have been well-known examples of violence and conflict, um, really that has never been the default position. There have been many moments in history, long periods, when religious traditions um, managed to live together somewhat harmoniously. So to, to drill down into those traditions, to figure out what resources spiritual um, um, intellectual, uh, textual um, uh, resources that could help us. So our religions in the practice of peace is not just another political science course, it's not just another global affairs course, so those are things that are very important. I mean, I, I know from my Belfast background you can't ignore any of that. But we also wanted to um, uh, feature much more strongly the religions themselves and see what we could learn from the funded wisdom of these traditions over many, many centuries. And I suppose my moment is not too dissimilar from yours, to be honest. Um, I, I had a very, I mean, two great moments this year with the RPP. The first was a talk given by Susie Hayward, who's our own alum, who now uh, fronts the, the religion side of the United States Institute of Peace in, in Washington. Um, and she did a great job on women and peace building, uh, which she just edited a new book on, because the role of women in peace building has really been uh, a story not well enough told. And then the second was the imam and the pastor from Nigeria, both of whom had been rival militia leaders, and the pastor had actually lost his hand in a violent incident. The imam had lost um, many of his relatives in violent confrontations, and that kind of hard edge in Nigeria between the interface between Islam and, and Christianity. Um, and they built um, through um, not a kind of easy peacemaking. It, was a, it, it had two steps forward, one step back. There were some difficult moments. But they figured it out. And just through their common humanity, um, they built a peace movement in Nigeria, which has been scaled to other parts of Africa and uh, to Kenya. And, and they wanted to scale it to us at Harvard and to invite our help and cooperation in uh, uh, helping them get their message out. And I just found both of them very powerful individuals, neither of whom gave up their religious tradition, um, um, but found a way of being deeply committed to their faith traditions, but also deeply committed to peace building and to mutual acceptance. And, that's where we've got to get to uh, at Harvard Divinity School and the World Order. I mean, uh, we don't want people to come here with their faith traditions to give them up. You know, we, we want people to come with their faith traditions and uh, to think about them and think how they relate to other faith traditions, just as we have to do in the world all the time. So the, R the Religions and Practice of Peace, the RPP we call it, I think is one of the um, great things that's happening at our uh, Divinity School. It's just so much fun seeing those evening colloquia um, completely full uh, with energetic students enrolled in classes from all over the university um, thinking about these issues. And, and you just know these students are going to go out and make a difference. So uh, uh, that is something I'm very proud of at Harvard Divinity School, uh, that initiative, but more especially the students in the initiative.